Hi, my name's Elaine Daggett I, and I live here in Westland and have lived here for since 1996 we moved here, but I am a native Oregonian and proud of it. My art journey has been long and I started out of college going into art and due to just kind of different circumstances and um, you know the support I was receiving at the time from some of the teachers either it was really positive feedback or it was less than positive feedback I started to question my um, art direction as as a career and so I started in interior design I actually got my um, Bachelor of Arts in interior design and that was in late 80s. And then I got a career, worked for some architectural firms, did commercial interior design, and did that until probably 1981, all the way through uh, 1995, I did uh, commercial interiors. And then took time off, was raising my family, and uh, we had moved from California back here to Oregon. And I found myself again working for local architectural firms uh, doing commercial design. And so I did that kind of in and out from 1985 to 2000. And then I got this kind of sustainability bug. And I started reading uh, some books and I kind of became part of a, a book group that would read it was actually developed by the Northwest Earth Institute, which is a Portland-based um, organization, nonprofit. I'm not sure if they're still around, but they would have these readings, and then a group of us would get together and do like a dinner party and and talk about like voluntary sim simplicity. What does that mean? And how to raise, you know, kids in a healthy planet? And you know, where does our water come from? And so I realized at that point in time that my personal beliefs around the environment and and our life and then my my professional work was not aligned and so I kind of put some inquiries out and I just so happened to meet the right person at the right time at the right place it was one of those you know epiphanies that just came from above and I left the design world and got involved in sustainability and then I co-founded a uh, sustainability company um, with some partners and that was called Green Building Services and we did some amazing work um, so sustainability meant the built environment so uh, you know, as the library has a lot of green features here and pretty much any school, new construction school here in West Lynn and abroad are, are lead buildings. And so we did a lot of that work. Uh, we certified over, you know, 800 uh, lead buildings around the globe. My work allowed me to travel and meet a lot of amazing uh, people that was very, also very passionate. So, so today, and I'm now part of a large engineering firm and I am the strategic advisor for sustainability company-wide. So through all of that, I, you know, realize that this this piece of me that was my art background kept merging and it kept evolving while i i did my work i had this niggle just like it just wouldn't leave i had to paint and so i take some classes here and there and just found myself getting more immersed in my art um, and i i consider myself kind of a weekend warrior and then COVID happened and with COVID things just stopped, right? And so what that allowed me to do was to focus more on my art and kind of my passion. And at the same time, um, my son, who's an environmental science um, degree major, kind of got me involved in birding. And so he got me a couple of birdhouses and I put them in my backyard and I started working from home and I have a big window and I could see the birds and what they were doing and it was just amazing. And so I started sketching the different birds and I did like this journal entry of watercolor and sketches and just kind of thoughts in the date. So if you all recall, you know, we had the fires, we had the ice storm, we had, you know, COVID and, and the protest. And it was a lot of processing, you know, not only for myself internally, but for the world at large. 
And so my art really started, you know, I became more aware of this innate desire that I had to paint. And I had, and I had to paint what I saw. And so I started painting birds. And, and, and I have this kind of secret passion of painting um, every bird that I see and I photograph. So then I had to get a camera and I'm kind of learning how to photograph and that's a whole nother story. But uh, that was, yeah, that's kind of how, where I started and how I got here, so. So the show that you see here today at Westland uh, Pub Public Library, first of all, thank you to Westland Public Library for opening their doors to all the artists to, to share. Um, this show represents the Pacific Northwest and uh, Kenai, Alaska, as I see it through my eyes and my lens. And the pieces that you see, uh, you have um, Haystack Rock, there's Rowena Crest, they are from hikes that I've taken and just there was a moment that captured me and I just stopped and said, oh my gosh, what this beauty. And so I would photograph it either um, with my uh, large camera or with my phone. And the birds are, are all taken uh, with my camera. And then I come back and I, you know, I sketch them and I start laying them out and kind of certain ones call to me. And you'll see from the collection, you see a bear and an eagle and a sandpiper and uh, some, you know, landscapes. And I was fortunate to uh, go to uh, Kenai, Alaska and go bear viewing with my sister-in-law at uh, White Salmon Falls Lodge. And there was uh, guided by a um, professional uh, environmentalist who uh, works within the natural habitat and guides people in a safe manner. So um, her, her site is uh, Brooks Little Bear. She's a professional photographer and, and quite an amazing individual, but she ensured our safety and we got very close to grizzly bears and there was um, a mother and cubs and the painting that you see here, I call it up close and personal. And literally this bear walked by us, um, you know, within five feet and we're, we're in a group and it was like, oh, this is really close. <laughs> and I stepped back and she stepped forward and, and you know, I'll always remember that moment. These paintings um, are all from my own personal experience and a part of nature that uh, is meaningful to me and just sharing that awareness for others that may not have that opportunity. I work in pastel primarily. It's, I think, a misunderstood medium because a, a lot of the masters started with pastel. And, and pastel and oil and the medium is timeless. It won't fade. Um, you do have to protect it with glass. So every piece that I have uh, is got a non-glare uh, museum quality glass over it and, and then a nice quality frame. Pastel can be intimidating. There are a gazillion colors, um, which is, for me, it's cool because if you recall, I started in interior design and color and design was really kind of true to form for me. And, you know, there's a place in Washington called Dakota and it's like a pastel heaven. So I call it the candy store. So it's like probably about 20 different manufacturers that make pastel. There's hard sticks, there's soft, soft sticks, there's medium. And, and the trick to the medium is learning how to use it successfully. There's some teachers that are really good. Um, Marla Baguetta came from Westland and uh, she was a fellow parent. We went to Cedar Oak, our kids went to Cedar Oak Elementary School. And she, uh, really taught me a lot and she now doesn't do many personal classes but she does a lot of online so if anyone wants to learn about 
pastels and a, and a um, take from a really excellent teacher, Marla Baghetta, would, would be your person. Just look her up. Susan Kuczynski is another local artist. She's in Portland. I did a lot of mentoring with her when uh, during COVID. And, it, you know, she's, you know, got a workshop going in Italy uh, right now. And they're both excellent teachers that are local for those that want to learn about pastel. The person that has inspired me the most is Richard McKinley. And Richard McKinley is a pastel artist. And all of these artists have painted the ones that I've mentioned, Marla Begretta. Marla Baghetta, uh, Susan Skinsinski, and Richard McKinley, they have painted their entire lives. And so 40 plus years. And, you know, I, I look at their work and Richard, he's out of Medford, Oregon. And I did a workshop, I've done a couple workshops with him, but last year I did a workshop in Italy, in Northern Italy. And he, we did plein air and we were standing over the Lot River <clears throat> looking down at this valley. And it was, it was one of those moments that, um, and I'm getting emotional, it was one of those moments of that this is on my bucket list. And to be, you know, once again, looking at nature with a brilliant teacher and it was it was just amazing so yeah so those would be the three people that are still living <laughs> you know and of course the masters you know the list goes on um but you know they're all extremely talented um artists and pastel tends to be their medium so Low Tide is a painting that um, challenged me. As you can see by most of the work, it tends towards more realism and, you know, nature-based. And a part of me wants to continue to push the limits and be more expressive and not be abstract. I don't think I'll ever be an abstract painter, but kind of push the, the limit with the, the light and dark and the emotion and that a piece might bring. And Low Tide was an example of how that pushed me as an artist to really not worry if it was realistic or not because some people look at the pieces and they don't know what it is. They like it, it draws them in, but they don't know that it's actually sand and a low tide and the ripples and you know the kind of patterns that the sand gives. And, and then the morning sun and the glow that it, that it brings. So it was one of those, again, magical moments that um, it's like, okay, bucket list number two, check. It pushed me as an artist and I want to explore more of that kind of work in my future work. The Blue Heron is a piece that we had um, taken out at Jackson Bottom Wetlands. So um, it's a preserve um, for wildlife and we often go out there to go birding. And this heron, you know, it was just lucky. <laughs> for those of you that take uh, photographs, it's like either they, you know, I get one in 20 that actually is worth painting from, if, if that. And this one happened to be a, a good picture. And then when I started painting, it just came together. The colors and, and when I relook at it, I realized how relaxed I was. And I didn't force anything. And I wasn't so focused on accuracy and, and you know, attention to detail and the pastel just kind of, you know, there's a lot of pattern and there's a lot of texture. There's a lot of color that overlaps each other. And the piece just came together. And then when I was done and I had shared it with a couple people, they go, oh my, this really works. And it was just one of those lucky moments where, you know, 
pencil goes to paper, pastel goes to paper, and the medium flows. And you know, my my physical body, my spiritual body, my intellect, everything came together into a final piece on the paper. And that's why I really cherish that piece a lot. I think that art is important to society and culture um, because it's a view into what's happening in at that point in time, either in a person's own life or it could be a portrait of someone and it's a view into that person's life. You know, we think of the Mona Lisa and it's like, who was that woman? What was her life? What was her experiences? We think as much of that as we do from about who Leonardo the painter was. So for me and my art, I want to express the natural environment but I also want to express the fact that we have a changing planet and we have to protect the natural assets that, that we have that I think we often take for granted. So um, the birds that I paint often are from my backyard. I have a certified backyard uh, habitat. And so I've created a small protective environment in my own backyard that I don't use chemicals, I don't use pesticides, yes, I pull weeds by hand, and it has become a haven for pollinators and uh, birds. And I don't have a big backyard, you know? So my art is expressed through that. Many of the birds that I paint, if you go to my website, are from my backyard you know, and some from my birding expeditions. The Alaska and some of my other landscape and, na and nature pieces is just to remind us that we live in a very fragile ecosystem and we have to protect care of it. You know, I'm gonna say Mother Earth has done a lot to take care of us and it's time that we take better care of her because it is changing, climate change is real and I want to express that in my art and be more vocal about my concern for the environment through my art. When I think about my art journey and you know the fact that I'm an emerging artist, I still have a full-time job. Uh, and you know, I have one step in, in my, my career, which is a sustainability consultant, which is very different than my art world. But they fit together nicely. And what I wanna pay tribute is to my colleagues that show interest in my art and know that, you know, I'm in a transitioning period in my life where, you know, eventually I'll be able to do art full time. Uh, but also my family, um, my daughter Mallory, who always challenges me with my art. It's like, she goes, well, mom, it's not my style, but that's okay. And I, people are free to like something or not like something. I don't expect everyone to like my art, but sharing how you feel is like, that's okay. And so I encourage people to, when they look at someone's art, to be honest and say this works for me or you know this 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 doesn't my son for connecting me into the world of birding and he's a really good critic <laughs> about birds and and um you know he helps me identify birds and and all of that and then my husband who's kind of a continual supporter and then my sister, who is also a very good critic, and I, I send her pictures and she goes, well, I like this or, you know, and, and my friend Ruth, um, who is also, she's a quilter and we, she shares her quilts, I, I share my paintings. And so I appreciate everyone in my family and my friends who have supported me with my art and encouraged me to continue. So I feel very blessed. <laughs>